Hey everyone. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today. For me, that's the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I'd like to pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging, and also extend that respect to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Island people who might be tuning in today. Okay, what a weird and scary time that we're living in. This is today's face mask. I'm supposed to actually be speaking to you on a stage right now, but this is gonna have to do. Now more than ever, the world needs your powerful positive ideas for change. And so I'm really excited to be here with you today. My name is Rosie Thomas and I'm co-founder and CEO of Project Rocket. I wanna tell you about a simple idea that my sister and I had when we finished high school has since turned into Australia's youth driven movement against bullying, hate and prejudice. So today Project Rocket sends really passionate young people, probably just like you, but a little bit older, into schools all over Australia to run workshops that help students stand up to bullying, hate and prejudice instead of just standing by and watching. So that's Project Rocket today, but it really hasn't always been like that. Let's go all the way back to the beginning for a moment because people often ask me, why did you start an anti-bullying organization? Like, were you really, really badly bullied at school? And actually guys, my answer often surprises them. I definitely know what it's like to be bullied and I can say firsthand that it's utterly soul destroying. If that's where you're at right now, I'm so sorry and you don't deserve it. And I hope people stand up for you. But I also remember there were times at school when I was sometimes part of the problem of bullying. I think as humans, we need to remember that we're actually capable of both behaviors. Now, actually that wasn't the reason though that I started, started Project Rocket because at times I was part of the bullying situation. Actually, when I was at school, I was one of the majority of people in a bullying situation. And that's the audience. So those who see it happen and can do something about it. You know, I wanted to stand up to bullying, but so much of the time, I actually just didn't know how. It wasn't because I was like a mean girl or like evil. I just didn't stand up all the time because I just didn't really know how to do it without bombing or without putting myself at risk or without being laughed at or judged. But when I got to the end of school, I was so angry that this issue, bullying, was just sucking the light out of my peers. It's so preventable and yet, it was totally, yeah, extinguishing people's light. So we looked around and we saw that no one was addressing the issue of bullying in a way that actually reached young people like me. Now, I know it's really wild to think that there was even a time when there were no anti-bullying programs in schools, but that's what it was like when we started. There really wasn't. And that's why we knew we had to launch Project Rocket. That's when we came up with this simple but big idea for a better world. And this is it. We believe in a world where kindness and respect thrive over bullying, hate and prejudice, and all young people are free to realize their potential. So fast forward over a decade, and now we hire teams of presenters who get to travel all over the country and work with hundreds and thousands of students just like you. So yeah, in the beginning, we had no idea if Project Rocket was gonna even work. We wasn't sure if it was gonna to totally bomb, if people would tell us to just like give up and go and get a job somewhere, but it really took off. You know, we started small with this idea and started working in schools in Melbourne and it just really took off. So over the years we grew and from there we decided that we could do so much more than just running face-to-face -face workshops in schools. We wanted to get creative, you know, like dig deep and have fun and solve problems and innovate and reach way more young people with these messages. So we got together with a whole bunch of young people on our team and built an online platform called Project Rocket Online that's basically made our workshops available anywhere with an internet connection. But we knew that we could do more. So we teamed up with Google a few years back to start creating Project Rocket TV. PR TV is a show created by young people, for young people, starring young people, and talks about the tough stuff that just doesn't get enough airtime at school. So here's a quick episode with me and my mate Danae. We talk about the risks and the rewards of standing up for what you believe in. Hey. 
Hey guys, so standing up for what you believe in is the best feeling ever. There's no doubt about it, but it can be pretty scary. But today we're gonna to be talking about the risks and the rewards of speaking out. And we are so lucky to have on set with us a really good friend of Project Rocket, Danae. Danae, welcome to Project Rocket TV. Thank Tell you. us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm Danae, I'm 17 years old and I currently go to Frankston High School. Nice. I think since I was a really little kid, I've always been passionate about social justice. And that's probably why when my sister and I finished high school like 11 years ago now, we decided to start Project Rocket. Basically because we saw how much bullying just totally sucked. It just robbed our peers of their potential and their opportunities. And we just looked around and saw that no one was doing anything about it in a way that actually reached young people. And so, yeah, we just decided to give it a crack and Project Rocket was born. So that's me, but what lights your fire? Um, I think that my biggest passion is definitely being able to provide representation and justice for minority and marginalised groups. Um, empowering other people helps me be empowered to do better as well. Okay, the most challenging part of standing up for me over the years would be my self-confidence, which I know comes as a bit of a surprise to people because I'm kind of extroverted and people just think I'm like have oodles of confidence. But over the years starting Project Rocket, um, I've just had self-doubt. I guess the biggest challenge for me has been like quietening that little voice that tells me I can't and instead just like really pushing myself out of my comfort zone to like really challenge myself to stand up. Um, I'm still battling with self-confidence, but it's getting better. What about you? What's like your biggest challenge? Um, I think definitely my biggest challenge would have to be p other people's perceptions. I'm very weary Judgment. of what people yes. are thinking or people are saying, because at school I've been nicknamed the social justice warrior. Uh. So it's like whenever I'm speaking out on an issue that like everyone should be talking about, they're always like, oh, here she goes again. Oh, of course it's Danae speaking again. Like, you know, they kind of just like have that expectancy. So how do you put those voices aside? Because it's one thing to say, I'm just not going to listen to them, but it's kind of hard at school when those voices feel so loud. At the end of the day, I kind of think of it as like we're the drivers of our own lives and they're just the passengers. And to get to our destination, we have to follow our own directions. We can't be following someone else's directions. For me, the biggest reward is when your action actually inspires other people to stand up too, which really is social change, right? It takes one person to stand up for others to do the same. And I reckon that's the biggest reward ever. Um, what about you? What is the biggest reward for you? I think for me personally, my biggest reward, it's so hard to put into words, but it's like doing things is never about me and it's never for self-interest or self-reward or to like receive a reward or recognition. It's about being able to empower others, like what you were saying, inspiring others. And it's just like the best feeling. Like, like I can't, like I can't even put it into words or like fathom like how like grateful I feel when someone else feels that they too now have a voice. Look, guys, it, it just goes to show that it doesn't matter how you stand up. It doesn't matter whether it's big or whether it's tiny. Standing up for what you believe in, standing up for what matters, actually makes you feel like you matter. So, go get it. When we started Project Rocket all those years ago, when we just finished high school, we never could have dreamed of the roller coaster ride that this would take us on. You know, starting a social change organization and movement in an age like this. No one taught me at school that I could ditch the mold and, and simply invent my own career and make a difference to have to dig deep and challenge myself and learn new skills and build a team and solve problems has been the most rewarding and enriching part of my whole life. You know, Project Rocket is now the go-to youth cyber safety partner of Google, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. My sister and I serve on their global safety boards as the Australian representatives, sharing all the stuff that we learn from students like you on how they can make their platform safer and kinder. We want to make sure that your voices are heard on the biggest international stages to create the change that we want to see in the world. Now, this journey hasn't always been easy. In fact, it's been really hard. 
It's been challenging. I have really battled self-doubt. I know it doesn't look like it, but like anyone, I can have confidence issues. I haven't thought that I've been able to do it. I've really had to dig deep. You know, I wasn't necessarily the cleverest person at school. When I finished school, I had obviously no business experience and we didn't have any big plans for world dominations. We just had an idea. We saw a problem that desperately needed fixing. We just wanted to stand up and help other young people do the same. If I can do it, you can do it. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope I get to see you all in person next year at one of the 2021 It Takes a Spark or Yes conferences around Australia. And remember remember that um, entrepreneurship and leadership doesn't choose you. You choose leadership and entrepreneurship. Remember that making the world a better place is yours for the taking. So what are you waiting for? Go get it.